Hi, I'm Dr. Vandenbrock. I'm a clinical psychologist, Army veteran, and deputy director of the Stephen A. Cohen Military Family Clinic at Easter Seals. I'm going to talk to you today about the whys and hows of deep breathing in order to assist with stress management. We've often heard things like just slow down and take a deep breath or count to 10 and breathe slowly. And a lot of times there's not really an explanation as to how to do that effectively, why we should do it. And so I wanted to spend a little time today talking about those things. Part of our response to stress includes something called the fight, flight, or freeze response. That response is a physiological mechanism to respond to danger. It's a very old survival system designed to respond to immediate threats to our survival. That is, for instance, if we're walking through the woods and a grizzly bear pops out, maybe on the other side of a field, 100 yards away, it mobilizes our physical resources in our body to escape from danger. That might be the flight part. We may run away. It might be the fight part where we um, prepare to fight, you know, hand to hand with a grizzly bear uh, with our best ability in order to survive. Or it might be freeze. A freeze response you might have seen if you encounter rabbits in your yard or if you've ever seen a deer uh, in the woods or at the side of the road or something like that. It's also part of that response. Um, it, it just sort of depends uh, on how maybe imminent the threat is um, and what offers our best chance of survival in that moment. So sometimes we might go to fight, sometimes we might go to flight. All of this is controlled um, by the autonomic nervous system. Uh, the autonomic nervous system has two major branches, the sympathetic nervous system and the parasympathetic nervous system. The sympathetic nervous system is the part that activates the fight or flight. And uh, being part of the autonomic nervous system, it controls a bunch of things that are automatic. We don't have voluntary control over them. So when that sympathetic nervous system is activated, it does things like increases our heart rate, um, moving blood rapidly through the body so that we could run really fast, for instance. It increases our breathing so that we're oxygenating that blood. It tenses the muscles, uh, large muscles that would be involved with fight or flight. So like the muscles in our upper thighs, our upper arms, things like that. Um, and it constricts the blood vessels in the peripheral parts of our body, like our hands and feet. So you might notice when you're under stress, muscle trembling, cold hands, racing heart, feeling like you can't get a breath or you're breathing very rapidly, all of that's part of the sympathetic nervous system. Uh, it also does things like slow or stop our digestion uh, because there's a lot of blood around the stomach uh, for digestion. And in an emergency situation where we would have fight, flight, or freeze, we need that blood in our big muscles, not digesting food. Uh, and that's one of the reasons sometimes stress can cause some GI upset or stomach upset um, because of that um, sympathetic nervous system shuttling the blood away from the stomach. So all of these things are designed uh, to mobilize us for about 20 minutes. They're, it's a system designed for immediate short, uh, short duration stressors. So you've either successfully run away from that grizzly bear or you've turned into lunch. And um, the system works really well for that. It's actually very effective for uh, you know, responding to those kinds of dangers. What happens when we're under chronic stress, you know, like maybe work stress, the pandemic situation, uh, demands in our lives that are causing us to lose sleep, have difficulty um, concentrating and things like that, 
is that we um, get into that fight or flight state and we're kind of there chronically. And the system's really not designed for that. It wears us down. It wears down our immune functioning. We feel tired. We feel um, physically exhausted by it because it takes a lot of energy to sort of be in that fight, flight, or freeze state for long periods of time. The good news is that the sympathetic nervous system has a complementary part, which is called the parasympathetic nervous system, and they work in, in opposite uh, of each other. So the sympathetic nervous system is a little bit like the gas pedal, and the parasympathetic is a little bit like the brakes. It brings us out of that fight, flight, or freeze. It slows our heart rate. It slows our breathing. It sends the blood back to the periphery peripheral parts of our body, and it helps us return to a calm state. Most of the things that I described as being affected by the sympathetic nervous system are not under our voluntary control. We cannot voluntarily decide whether you know blood is around our stomach for digestion or not. We can't really voluntarily control our heart rate or sweating or things like that. The one piece of the parasympathetic nervous system and the sympathetic nervous system that we have voluntary control over is our breathing. So by slowing our breathing, we can activate that parasympathetic nervous system and help to calm and slow the fight or flight response. And this will help us feel recharged, will help us feel calmer, it will help restore our body's balance. In order to be effective with deep breathing, the only thing you really need to do, and there's lots of different instructions out there, but the key is to breathe slowly. That is about eight seconds in and eight seconds out. And if you're able to do that, you'll find with practice that you can feel the effect of coming back down from that fight or flight. In the next video, I'm going to talk about how to do deep breathing effectively in order to help with our stress response.